Hello world! Welcome to Learning Java, one byte at a time. This is video 41 in a tutorial series geared at bringing the wonderful wide world of Java to those with little or no programming experience. This video is a continuation of the development of the Booker application, a vehicle appraisal app. In the last video, we were continuing the construction of our view class by defining a method called clear project, which was in charge of going through and clearing out any data that was in any of our view objects. So setting text fields equal to null or to empty text, setting Boolean values to false, clearing out button selections, and essentially just clearing any data out of the project uh, whenever the user clicks the new project button to ensure that they have a fresh palette to work with. In this video, we're going to be working on the getter methods. And so we have getters and setters, just like in most uh, classes that have constructors. And in the, the view class, the point of the getter methods are so that the model class can utilize the controller to interface with this view class and pull data in. And the way that it's going to do that is with the getter methods. And so we have the vehicle name text field which will itself have a getter method, and it's going to return the text that's in that field. And so there are going to be two cases that the uh, model will need to do this. Whenever the user hits the uh, Save Project uh, button, it's going to need to pull in all of the data from the palette and parse that data into a text file and save that. Or whenever the user clicks Generate Sales at, it is uh, likewise going to need to pull in all of the data, and it's going to do that using the getter methods, and it's going to pass that data on to another class, which is going to do all of the calculations and then return the sales add content. And so if we jump into Notepad, we're still working in our view class. We have here the uh, clear project method that we wrote in the last video. We have the constructor, which goes through and assigns uh, constraints and values to all of the view objects and then attaches them to the panel. Um, here we've defined all of the view objects in the video before that. And then the video before that, we had all of our imports. And so this is a very lengthy class, but keep in mind we're following the principle of single responsibility in that everything we're writing in this class has only to do with defining the view objects. It's not going to take care of any of the calculations or logistics of the program whatsoever. Just so happens that this particular application has many different view objects, and so it's going to be a lengthy class. So we'll go ahead and begin to write the getters. And as I mentioned, the getters are going to go through and pull in any data that's in any of these view objects one at a time. And so every view object is going to have its own getter method. And so we'll kind of start at the top and we'll go through. We'll start with the uh, vehicle name. So we'll write a method called, it'll be a public method. All of the getters and setters will be public so they can be accessed by their classes. We'll do uh, public, it'll return a string and we'll call it get vehicle name. And this method, will simply return the vehicle name text field and we'll call the method get text which is going to return whatever text is in that text field. Next we will define the get vehicle make and this one will as well just call the vehicle make text field and call the method get text on that text field which will return that as the string. After that, we will do another string called get vehicle model. Just as before, we're simply going to return the value of whatever text is in the vehicle model text field by calling the get text method. All right. After that, we're going to do a uh, we're going to get the vehicle base cost so that the blue book calculator knows which uh, base value to be working with. This will also be a public method. This one, however, is going to return a double value because the base cost is going to be uh, needed for calculation. So that's going to be a numeric. So we'll do get vehicle base cost, and we're going to return, we're going to need to um, parse this as a double because it's being entered as text, but we don't want to return it as text because the method itself is returning a double, and we know that we want to be able to convert that to a double before it's returned. So we're going to use the um, double wrapper class. So this is the object that represents the double. We're going to call its uh, method called parse double, which essentially accepts a string and returns a double, uh, a cast of a double from that string. So we're going to parse double, and then inside that, we're going to access the vehicle base cost text field, and we're going to get the text. 
just like so. And so that will enable whatever text is present to be returned to this method, which will then parse it as a double and then return that as the double for our method. All right, after that, we're going to do a public, this will be an int because it's going to be the year of the vehicle. We'll call it get vehicle year. And this one, just like with the uh, base cost, we're going to return and we're going to call the integer wrapper class. So this is the object that represents the integer. And it also has a method called parse int from which we will pass through the vehicle year text field. And on that, we're going to get the text. So it operates just like the method before it. And that will then, of course, return whatever text is in the text field to this method, which will then parse it as an integer and then return it as an int to the model class. All right, so next we're going to do get vehicle transmission. This is going to be a little bit more complex. So this one's going to be a string value. And we'll call it get vehicle transmission. So we need to have a case selector. We need to see if the manual radio button is selected or the automatic radio button or the EV radio button is selected. And based on whichever one of those is selected, that's gonna be the text that we return. And we'll just define that as a string. So let's write an if clause. So we're gonna know if vehicle transmission radio or manual radio button dot, and then we'll call the is selected method on the radio button. So if that returns true, if that button is selected, then we're going to return a string called manual. We'll write an else if clause right here. If that's not the case, then we'll check to see if the vehicle transmission automatic radio button is selected. And if it turns out that that is selected, then we're going to return a string that we'll call automatic. And finally, if none of those are the case, then we'll check to see if the vehicle transmission EV radio button is selected. In which case we know it's an electric vehicle and we'll return the text EV. And keep in mind that all of these values are going to be used either when the user tries to save the project, in which case these values will be passed through to the data access object and then saved to a file, or whenever they generate a sales ad, in which case these values are going to be passed through to the uh, calculator, which is going to perform all of the logic and check to see you know, how the value is going to change based on whether it's a manual, an automatic, or an EV, and update the final price which, with which it will then return that to the sales ad. All right, and now in the case that none of the buttons are selected, we're going to return null. And in a little bit, we're going to use the uh, model class to write a uh, small method that's going to catch this uh, in the case of it being null and just alert the user that there was some error, that one of the fields was not completely filled in. So we do want to make sure that we uh, account for the possibility that none of the buttons are selected because we don't want to generate a sales ad in the case that the data is not fully complete. So that will be everything we need for the get uh, vehicle transmission method. Next, we'll do uh, a similar one with the get vehicle drive. So it's going to be public. We're going to return a string. We're going to call it get vehicle drive. And in this method, we'll also need to have some case selection. So we're going to check to see if the vehicle drive front wheel drive radio button is selected. Then we're going to return a string that we'll just define as being front wheel drive. Else, if the vehicle drive rear wheel drive radio button is selected, then we will just return a string that says rear wheel drive, like so. Else, if the vehicle drive all wheel drive radio button is selected, then we'll return that as a string. Like that. And then finally, accounting for the possibility that none of the buttons are selected, we will return null. Okay. 
So that takes care of the drive. Next, we're going to begin attacking the safety features. So these are going to be checkboxes. So we're going to need to have a Boolean value returned. So let's do a public. We'll return a Boolean. We'll call this get vehicle airbags. And we're just going to return vehicle airbags checkbox. And we're going to call a method is selected. So the method is selected is going to return a true or false based on whether or not that checkbox is checked. That true or false will then be returned as the Boolean value for this getter method. So pretty simple. We'll do the same thing with the other two safety features. So we'll do get vehicle ABS. And we'll return the value of whether or not the vehicle ABS checkbox is selected like so. And next we'll do the same thing with the rear view camera. All right, easy peasy. So after that, we'll do the grade of the vehicle. This one's gonna be another case selector because it's a button group. So we'll return a string value. We'll call it get vehicle grade. And we'll build an if clause. We're going to check the value of the vehicle grade economy radio button and whether it's selected. And in the case that it is, we're going to return a string that we're going to call economy. Economy, if I can spell that right. All right. Else, if the vehicle grade standard, nope, not performance standard radio button is selected, then we will return a string that we will define as being standard. And else if the vehicle grade performance radio button is selected, we will return a string that reads performance. And finally, we'll account for the possibility that none of the buttons are selected by returning a null value and then capturing that with our error handler. And it's important that we get the spelling on these uh, very precise because the Blue Book calculator is going to be looking for the literal exact spelling of these values. And so making sure that we have those as being accurate is important. Next, we're going to return an integer for the vehicle mileage. So we'll do a public int get vehicle mileage. And this is simply going to, as before, call the integer wrapper class, call the, met the method parse int of that class, and pass through the value of whatever's in the vehicle mileage text field as a call to the get text method. After that, we will um, check the previous owners. So first we're going to check to see if the checkbox is enabled. And after that, we will check the value in the checkbox. So let's do a public Boolean, get vehicle previous owners. We're going to call this get vehicle previous owners enabled to differentiate it from the second method we're going to write. And we're going to check to see if the vehicle previous owners checkbox is selected. And in the case that it is, we're going to return, actually, we can actually simplify this. We don't need an if clause here. What we can do is just simply return the value of the vehicle previous owner's checkbox being selected. Save ourselves a couple of lines of code there. And then next, we'll do a public int that we'll call get vehicle previous owners and that int will then itself check to see if the vehicle previous owners checkbox is selected so we'll do if vehicle previous owners checkbox is selected because we don't want it to return anything if it's not selected. So if it is selected, then we're going to return a call to the integer object, 
parsing the int because what's going to be in that field is going to be text. We'll pass through the vehicle previous owners, not the checkbox, the text field of whatever value is returned when we call the get text method. And in the case that it's not selected, we're going to return a zero. Because if it's not selected, then we can assume that the number of previous owners is zero. All right, after that, we're going to do the uh, luxury feature. So let's start with the public Boolean called get vehicle keyless entry. And this is going to simply return the vehicle keyless entry checkbox is selected. Next will be another Boolean called get vehicle premium sound. And this will return the value of the vehicle premium sound checkbox is selected. And finally, a Boolean get vehicle GPS navigation, which will return a Boolean value of whether or not the vehicle GPS navigation checkbox is selected. All right, so that takes care of the luxury vehicle or the luxury, the uh, luxury values. So now we can uh, attempt to get the vehicle class. And so this one's going to be a string. We'll call it get vehicle class. And it's going to need the case selector. So we'll check to see if the vehicle class, I believe it starts with utility. So we'll check the utility radio button is selected. In which case, we're going to return a string that we'll define as utility. Again, making sure that the spelling on this is very accurate. Else, if the vehicle class, I believe sport is next one, the sport radio button is selected, then we will return a string that reads sport. And lastly, if the vehicle class luxury radio button is selected, then we will return a value of a string that reads luxury, just like that. Finally, accounting for the possibility that none of them are selected, we'll return a null. All right, kind of coming up on the last few here, we're gonna check the accident history. This is a Boolean. And this is simply going to return the value of the checkbox. Actually, yeah, so we'll do a return vehicle accident history checkbox is selected, like so. And after that, we're gonna check the field that holds the commission rate. This is gonna be a double value because it's gonna be a, uh, uh, it's gonna be a decimal that's gonna be converted to a percent. So a public double called get vehicle commission rate is going to return the value of, now we need to do a little bit uh, more, a little bit uh, more deeper mathematics here. So we're going to return, we're gonna access the double wrapper object and call its parse double method. And in this method, we're gonna pass through the vehicle commission rate text field get text, so whatever text is in there, we're gonna to return to the double wrapper object and parse that as a double. But then that uh, decimal value needs to be uh, divided by 100, or rather the amount that they put in there needs to be divided by 100 to convert it to a decimal. And so what could uh, possibly be entered in the field would be a five or a 10 for five or 10%, because that's how the interface is set up. We need that five or 10 to first be converted from its text value into a double value, and then that double value needs to be divided by 100. And so that five will end up being converted to a value of 0 0.05, and the 10 will be converted to a value of 0.1. And then from there, we can perform the mathematics of uh, using it as a decimal value to um, return a percentage. And so after we divide that by 100, we put the semicolon, and that's everything we need for the commission rate. 
And after that, we need to access the text field that's gonna have the sales ad because there's gonna be um, the possibility that we're going to need to um, return the sales ad itself. So let's do a public string get vehicle advertisement. And that's simply gonna return whatever text is in the advertisement text field. So the entire advertisement, get vehicle advertisement text area, get the text like so. And that actually takes care of all of the getters. And so simply, simply this alone makes the video pretty long. And so we're gonna come back again in the next video and then define all of the setter methods. And then from there, our view class is actually finished. And so just like always, the code is available in a uh, GitHub link that's in the description of the vehicle or the description of the video. I encourage everyone to code side by side, but as uh, mentioned before, if it becomes tedious, feel free to just download the finished, pro uh, finished version of this project and work with it in whatever way is uh, gonna be best for you. Otherwise, I hope this was fun and entertaining. Can't wait to see everyone back again in the next video. Thank you so much and have a wonderful night.